Let's talk about the internet, the vast and intricate network that connects billions of people across the globe. It's the digital world we rely on every day for communication, entertainment, and even essential services. It has become an indispensable part of modern life, but most of our online lives are managed, curated, and controlled by a handful of tech giants, massive corporations that wield immense influence over the digital landscape. Your posts, emails, and photos, all the content you create and share, they're stored on servers owned and operated by these companies' vast data centers humming with activity. This centralized setup is efficient, allowing for seamless access and rapid data transfer. But it puts a lot of power, and a significant amount of risk, in a few hands, creating a potential point of failure. The original vision for the internet was more open and distributed, a network of networks where no single entity held absolute control. But convenience, ease of use, and readily available services led us here to this centralized model. Now a few companies decide what content is allowed, what voices are amplified, and what perspectives are suppressed. They also dictate what apps you can use, shaping the very tools we rely on to navigate the digital world. And crucially, they control how your data is handled, analyzed, and potentially monetized. Imagine living in a high-tech apartment building, a smart home connected to everything, where the manager controls everything, from the temperature to the lighting, all from a central system. Even your keys and mail are managed digitally, adding another layer of convenience but also control. It's convenient, undeniably so. But you give up privacy and control in exchange for that convenience, a trade-off with potentially far-reaching consequences. We've accepted this trade-off, often without fully understanding the implications. But is it still worth it? Are we truly benefiting from this arrangement, or are we sacrificing too much? Data breaches, censorship, and relentless tracking are the consequences of this centralized system. These are the potential downsides, the risks we face in exchange for the ease and accessibility of the modern internet. It's not about evil corporations deliberately seeking to harm us. It's about a system that concentrates power in the hands of a few, regardless of their intentions. Maybe it's time to rethink how the internet works, to explore alternative models that prioritize privacy, security, and user control. What if there's a better way, a more equitable, decentralized, and empowering way to connect and share information? Enter the decentralized internet, Web3 a new frontier where the power dynamic shifts. Here the network isn't controlled by a single entity but is instead run by its users, fostering a sense of community and shared ownership. It's a departure from the traditional model, where control is centralized under a single authority. Think of it as a neighborhood, a digital community, where everyone owns their own house and sets their own rules, contributing to the overall governance, no single landlord dictating the terms, no gatekeeper controlling access and information flow, Data and apps aren't confined to a single server but are spread across a global network of user-run computers, creating a more robust and resilient system. When you use a decentralized app or DAP, you're connecting directly with peers, bypassing a company's central server and its potential control. No single point of failure means no one can shut it down or censor you unilaterally, fostering a more open and free digital environment. Imagine collaborating on a document instead of relying on one centralized copy stored on Google's server, everyone has their own, always updated version, ensuring data integrity and accessibility. This distributed nature makes the system incredibly resilient and inherently censorship resistant, protecting freedom of expression. Early file sharing systems like BitTorrent utilize these core ideas, but Web3 takes it a step further, aiming to rebuild everything, social media platforms, storage solutions, even the world of finance, on open, transparent, and community-owned foundations. Users are no longer passive consumers, but become active participants, not just products to be used, but stakeholders in the network's success. It's a bold and ambitious vision for a more democratic, equitable, and people-powered digital world, but how does it actually work in practice? Two technologies power the decentralized web, peer-to-peer -peer networks and blockchains, P2P networks let computers connect directly, sharing data without a central server. This is how BitTorrent works. Files come from many sources at once, but P2P alone can't guarantee trust or consistency. That's where blockchain comes in. A public, tamper-proof ledger that everyone can verify. Each block contains transactions cryptographically linked to the last, making it nearly impossible to alter. Blockchain lets strangers agree on a single source of truth, without a middleman. It can manage digital identities, assets, and even run code, smart contracts, automatically. P2P handles data sharing. 
blockchain provides trust and security. Together they enable platforms where users control their data and identity. This is the backbone of a truly decentralized ecosystem. Why should you care? Three reasons. Privacy, security, and control. In today's web, your data is the product, collected and sold for ads. Decentralization lets you own your data, stored on your terms. Centralized systems are hacker targets. One breach can expose millions. Decentralized networks have no single point of failure, making attacks much harder. You control your identity. No company can lock you out or delete your account. Rules are set by the community, not a corporation. This is vital for free speech, especially in repressive regimes. Open protocols mean anyone can build new apps, leveling the playing field for startups. More innovation, more choice, and direct connections between creators and audiences, it's a chance to reshape the digital world for the better, but it's not without challenges. The decentralized web, while promising, faces some very real obstacles that need to be addressed. It's not a smooth, clear path ahead. First, technology blockchains can be slow and expensive, especially when the network is congested. Transaction speeds and fees can be a major deterrent. For mass adoption, decentralized apps must be as fast and easy to use as today's platforms. Users expect a seamless experience. User experience is another hurdle. Managing wallets and keys is confusing for most people. It's a barrier to entry for many potential users. The tech needs to become invisible, simple enough for anyone to use. It needs to be intuitive and user-friendly. There's also the problem of harmful content. Decentralization makes moderation tough. It requires new approaches and technologies. Lose your private keys, your data or funds are gone, with no customer support to help you recover them. Regulation is a big question mark. Governments are still figuring out how to handle this new world and its implications. The borderless, anonymous nature of Web3 is both a feature and a challenge, presenting both opportunities and risks. Unclear laws can slow down investment and adoption, creating uncertainty for businesses and users alike. Balancing innovation with consumer protection will be tricky, requiring careful consideration and thoughtful policymaking. The future depends on how we solve these issues and overcome these hurdles. But the potential is huge, and the rewards could be transformative. The future will likely be a hybrid, centralized and decentralized systems coexisting. Sensitive data, identity, finances, health, could move to decentralized platforms you control. Imagine owning your social profile and moving it between networks at will. Creators could earn directly from fans without middlemen. Your online reputation and assets would be portable and truly yours. Decentralized storage could make your files permanent and censorship-proof. Crypto wallets and decentralized identities could become as easy as logging in today. The complexity will be hidden, just like the internet's plumbing is now. This shift won't solve everything but it offers a more user-centric, resilient web. The next decade will decide, will the internet belong to the few or to all of us?